What did I say I was going to do these every day? How's it going there, plebeian viewers, and welcome back to another edition of Quarantine Crit Day. I am already the worst, failing, missing days. Uh, I guess you could say I had a case of the Mondays. Didn't end up making a Monday episode. That one just got away from me. First thing today, I was going to start with a little story time. Went for a walk today, got out of the house a little bit, um, and it was it was weird, man. It was... You know, I live in a city that has a lot of uh, a lot of action, I guess you could say. I live in a relatively busy area, you know. People are always on the streets. It's not packed, but it's consistent. There's always people around, but whew, today it was just weird, you know. There was, like, nobody around. There was a group of, uh, Philly has groups of, uh, people who ride around on like dirt bikes and four wheelers and they run red lights and cause a ruckus. I did see a group of them. So it's good to see that quarantine can't shut everything down. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's weird tracking this, just watching how life has, has changed. It's depressing, but you know, which brings me to my first subject of discussion today. I, uh, I saw an interesting quote. Uh, I didn't save it because I wasn't thinking about this video at the time. But it was from like an elementary school principal, I think, and it was basically saying that we need to encourage our kids, and the message will go through to everybody, but he was speaking specifically to kids, but we need to encourage our kids to document this living history. We're in a time and a series of events that are unprecedented. This isn't something that's happened before, not to this scale. Um, hopefully it's something that won't happen again for a long time. So for kids to document what they're experiencing in any way would not only be extremely helpful, but extremely interesting to share throughout the ages. Um, and that got me thinking about artists because we have this ability to capture and perceive life in a different way, or at least present it in a different way. And if we can challenge ourselves to document what we're doing or how we're experiencing this time in history, then I think it's going to create some really interesting and really memorable work. I talked about in my other video, obviously staying creative during this time, but I didn't really talk about the subject matter of things. And I think if we can find a way to document what's going on, there's going to be some really really interesting and moving art that's made. I've seen a couple of photographers already go out and kind of uh, document the streets. And it's, these are some striking photos, especially the Philly photographers who've been doing it and are at areas that I know and that I know how uh, packed they are and they're just empty. It's just so strange. I know me personally with the downtime, I don't have a lot of downtime usually. So I've been uh, sketching, just kind of doodling again, you know, stuff that I used to do when I was in school and I was sitting between classes or I was bored in class, you know, just kind of letting the pencil or pen wander. Um, that's been fun to get back to doing that. And I think that we have an opportunity as artists to, uh, again, like I said in my other video, take advantage of a bad situation, make the best of a bad situation and document it in a way that I don't think many people have the ability to. Another thing that I wanted to talk about today was the value of teaching ourselves new things. Um, when Plebeian got started, and I guess when I left college in general, I, uh, I wasn't very well versed in digital art. I had done it in school. Um, I didn't really like it. I didn't necessarily get along with the professors who did that. And even when I did, it just wasn't work that really interested me. I didn't think it fit my process, how I did things. Um, I just didn't enjoy it. I knew how to do it. I could do it passably, but I just it just wasn't something that I was willing to dive into or take to the next level. And then all of a sudden, when you're working in a media company that does things like audio, video, image, animation, everything, you find yourself needing and wanting the skills to have that more. And what I wanted to push today was that we start teaching ourselves. Um, just watching YouTube videos, I've learned so much. Uh, the 
The newest example has been After Effects. I never used After Effects in school. I didn't really know about it. I didn't know the, the ability that the application gave you. Had I known about it, maybe I would have dove into it a little bit more, but it's been really interesting to learn it. Um, I've just been like watching YouTube videos. And what I've found is that with these things like YouTube videos and masterclass, I'm sure you've seen all the ads and the small pockets of people offering classes here and there, is that when we're able to curate a curriculum or what we're learning very, very specifically, it tends to be a lot more engaging. You know what I mean? Even if you are doing something like a drawing class because you're really interested in drawing, odds are you might not like some of the aspects of the drawing. So when people can really narrow it down into what they want specifically, then I think you engage a lot more people. And it's this is a method that works really well for the teaching yourself aspect, the one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I want to make this image do this in After Effects. There's likely a video out there for that specific thing. And once I or you have that, then you're sort of stepping in the right direction. And what this allows you to do is build a basis to explore the program. Things like, again, I'm gonna keep using the example After Effects. They're not intuitive enough in the way that you can kind of jump in there and figure things out. You could, but it would be a lot of like random, clicking so when you take a five minute ten minute video and you learn how to do one really specific thing you tend to learn that there's these little pockets that you can click around in so if i'm working with something like masks and i can kind of just bounce around in that or i'm in one specific folder of the animations and presets and i can kind of bounce around and test those out because they i know they're all going to do this we can more easily build a basis to establish a way that we can teach ourselves that's uh that's been one of the interesting things i mean there was a there was a period where i only knew how to do four or five really really specific things in after effects and i got to a point where what i wanted to do was kind of outside of the tutorials that i was watching and uh so i had to really teach myself new elements but just uh, I found myself connecting to little dots that I learned throughout the videos that I was watching and the other things that I'd made. And that gave me the freedom to kind of jump in to uh, more advanced animations and things like that. So I wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, three of my favorite YouTubers for learning specific things. Um, Avnish Parker, he has been huge for uh, helping me learn the ins and outs of After Effects. And I find myself constantly going back to him. He's got a whole, whole lot of uh, really popular tutorial videos that cover a whole lot of things. He does a lot of uh, logo-based animations. So those are really helpful if you're learning for branding or if you know you want to push a brand package that you're making to the next level. That's that's a guy that you'll want to you'll want to take a look at. Um, another one that I like is BAM Bam Animation. We've we've done some very illustrative ads and. I've always been interested in illustrative work and the idea of animation and this group of animators has really helped me figure out some of the uh, some of the intricacies of what goes into animation and especially transferring illustration to animation. They've got some pretty advanced stuff and they've also got some pretty simple stuff. So they're really cool if you want to immerse yourself in uh, into some really detailed projects. And the other one is uh, Peter McKinnon. He's been helpful for video editing in a lot of ways for me, uh, so really Premiere-based. But again, these are all very, very versatile channels that teach you a lot of different things. These are just my personal favorites. There's a whole bunch of them out there. One of the things that I've found in sort of teaching myself things is that it's never too crazy or too specific. If you think that what you're doing or what you need at that moment isn't going to be there at this point in the internet's existence it probably is going to be there so just give it a search see what comes up you might be able to at least find something close i've googled or youtube some really random shit and uh ended up finding what i was looking for so that's going to conclude it i'm going to keep this episode of quarantine crit day pretty quick thanks for watching 
I have been Forrest. You can follow me on Instagram at, at Forrest Hines Art. Follow along with all things plebeian at the home, www.plebeian.us. You can follow both of our Instagrams at, at plebeian underscore us and at plebeian.mag. You can follow us on Facebook, Plebeian Inc. You can follow us on Twitter. Let's pump up that Twitter at Plebeian Deli. And of course, subscribe to the YouTube. Um, I'll be making these as many days as I possibly can. Every day has been so daunting so far, but I'll try to be pushing them out consistently. Today is Tuesday. Tomorrow, some podcast highlights drop. So be sure to check out the Plebeian podcast as well. And while you're at it, check out the newest podcast on the Plebeian podcast family, River of Consciousness. They just dropped their 38th episode, and it is a fun one to listen to. So check them out as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.